Kaylee Rose here for Magic Image Hollywood Magazine today with Richard Hatch and we're going to be asking him some tough down and dirty questions. Wow. I'm very thankful for you to be here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm thankful you're here. Thank you for well, having me here. It's not the love. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so you have been... Oh my gosh. We're going to go back to Spanish now. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> you're going to throw me... <laughs> there. I know that word. Bonita. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. So I want to hear, you've had an incredible, incredible, amazing career. Actor from Battlestar Galactica, All My Children, one of my favorites. Thank you. I'll <laughs> Very cool. I appreciate that. So I want to hear more about how did you begin acting? When did you start acting? What age? Um, I started when I was uh, uh, actually around 20, 20 years old. Yeah, I, I went to my first acting class at 20 years old, and it wasn't to become an actor. Uh, I was the shyest really, what can I say, the most insecure person in the world and uh, uh, that wasn't the way I always was. I, there was a time when I was like crazy guy. I, I, I would tell jokes and do comedy and all kinds of stuff but I went through a period in my life that where I struggled and a teacher shamed me in the fourth grade and I ended up becoming very, what's the word, introspective, very shy and so somebody who said you should go to an acting class. And so they recommended the Eric Morris Actors Workshop, which was a very Stanislavski-based acting workshop. And what I discovered was, I mean, this was a place where I could learn how to deal with all my stuff, right? I didn't think about it becoming an actor, a star, making money. It was just an incredible place where I could learn about life, learn about myself, work through my issues. And uh, there was people like Jack Nicholson walking around. There was people like Sue Lyon, who played the original Lolita, uh, Hampton Francher, who wrote Blade Runner, um, all these New York actor types, and I'm this little surfer boy with blonde hair in the class, you know, but I kind of thought it was cool, and I hung around, got into it, and slowly but surely I discovered, wow, I think I like this, I think, I, think um, I can do this, and the teacher said, you know, Richard, if you work real hard, you could make something out of yourself, and that kind of started the little process for me. And I guess you did, and I guess it brought you out of your shell too, right, because you don't seem like that boy anymore. <laughs> What do you mean? The shy one. You're quite outgoing and delayed. Well, <laughs> well now I am. Yeah, actually I am. Yeah, it took, took, took enough years to do it. Um, and lots of shots of tequila. And, and uh, that always helped. Well, they always say nobody can get up on a dance floor. Nobody can sing karaoke. You know, and then you learn about all these actors that can't walk in front of a camera. I mean, what Paul Newman, right, was always so cool in front of the camera. I thought, how does he do that? How does he have that really laid back, cool, sexy quality? Of course, I mean, from what I gather, he would drink beer all day long. <laughs> so you're telling us the secret of your success was? Secrets? <laughs> I don't know. Are you telling us secrets? No, the point I'm making is I don't do that, but but I do think there's a lot of actors who can't face the camera without having a drink or two. You know, they don't. They may not be bond, but they you know they just take the little edge off. Um, but nevertheless, uh, what I'm trying to say is, for me, I discovered a process I loved. Um, it helped me with life, helped me with everything that I do, uh, relationships, and I discovered the, the art of uh, acting that really kind of took me on a career that has spanned over almost 45 years, from soap operas, theater, plays, rock musicals, to uh, Battlestar Galactica, old and new, um, Dynasty, a thousand other shows, and, uh, and a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor, which I, I did get. That. Congratulations, that's amazing. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that was about a huge moment in your life. Well, you know, it, it's, as, I don't know if you watch the Actors Studio. Do you watch the Actors Studio? Well, I've been watching all the episodes, which I had never watched. Watching these actors talk about their life, about all the things that happened to them. And you realize, my God, all the things I worry about myself. I mean, Gene Hackman was kicked out of, you know, the, uh, I think, a something playhouse. They told him he was the worst actor that ever lived, you know. Uh, I think Dustin Hoffman, um, they didn't want him for The Graduate. Nobody wanted him. Um, Al Pacino, the whole studio, everybody was against him being in, in The Godfather. Um, I mean, you find out all these people were just human beings with all the little insecurities and issues that we all have, just normal people. 
struggling to find their way, not actually knowing where it was, where it was going to take them. Uh, they weren't all like with a career plan saying, I'm going to be a movie star, right? Yeah. I mean, there are kids today who have a career plan. But back then, I think people just kind of stumbled their way into a career. And it turned into something. And then they really found that this was something that worked for them. So same thing for me. I kind of just, each step led to the next step. I never knew where it was going to take me. I was amazed. I got some commercials, you know. And then I got to New York, and I was doing some plays. And then I got the soap opera All My Children. When it first began, I was the original children of All My Children. And everybody remembers Erica Kane, uh, Susan Lucci, who I don't know what she does or what she eats or what she, you know, what she puts in her body, but my God, I don't know how she can look that good close up. And she's got to be in her 50s yeah. now. So anyway, the point is, it took me on a career arc that uh, is still going and I'm, I'm writing, directing, producing. Uh, I teach and lecture all over the country. I just came back from uh, Mexico City where I was uh, actually doing um, um, training for uh, graduating architecture, uh, textual, uh, architecture students who needed to go on career job interviews and had to learn how to interview and communicate and really basically sell themselves. And uh, I had an interpreter and I had never done that before and I have to say that it turned out to be actually effortless. I mean, uh, it was almost seamless. I thought, wow, this really works easy. The guy that was doing the interpreting was excellent and uh, loved the class and spent four days there and uh, got to drive around and probably, I didn't think there was another city as bad as um, LA with yeah. traffic, but Mexico City probably has the worst traffic in the world. Oh, you cannot get anywhere <laughs> unless you walk. You have to walk. So, uh, but anyway, I love Mexico City. It's beautiful and great food. Yeah. If I had stayed there another week, I would have gained about 40, 50 pounds, too. Yeah. Well, it seems like you can inspire, obviously, not just fellow actors, but also, as you're saying, architecture students. Do you have any advice for up-and-coming actors? Well, what I've learned, the, I, I guess I always teach, people teach what they learn the hard way, right? And uh, one of the things you first have to learn is not to let people talk you out of doing what you really want to do and what feeds and nourishes your soul, what, what, what excites you, what brings passion out of you. You have to trust that. Uh, that's first. Um, too many people don't follow their, their, their passion and they end up doing things that they don't want to do, working way too hard for way too little. Um, but like anything, if you don't do something you really get excited to do and passion to do, you're not going to work hard enough. You're not going to be the best at it. And you're never going to put the time and energy and commitment to take it somewhere. So, you know, as an actor, <clears throat> you're dealing with a very kind of unpredictable uh, industry where there's lots of ups and downs. You can be rich and famous one day and the next day you can't pay your bills. Uh, they take your phone calls one day, everybody takes the phone calls. Next day, nobody answers the phone. Um, you have to build a sense of your own self-esteem, your own inner strength, your own belief in yourself. Um, Many actors have gone up the ladder, gone down the ladder, and disappeared. Others have made it back, you know, have come back. Nick Nolte just came back and reestablished himself. Um, I can't even think of the other actor, and, and it's, it, he played the wrestler in that movie. What was oh. the big guy with the long hair, you yeah, know? Yeah. What's his name? I know the name. We'll get okay, it we'll get it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. the, the, point is, the point is that's the first step. And the second step is you have to find out what works for you. Everybody will tell you what you should do or not do, but you've got to listen, learn, and then find out for you and trust. It always comes down. Great acting comes from not the head. It comes from the heart, from the soul, from the gut, right? It's an intuitive thing, and you've got to trust that. And I think in life, you have to trust that too. Same thing goes for the people that you get involved with, the decisions to do this or not to do that comes down to this gut feeling and if you don't trust that you talk yourself out of it with your head you end up going down some pretty struggling dark paths so I think uh, what I've learned the hard way is to trust my my gut and if I had trusted I think uh, I wouldn't have gone half through half the pain struggling situations I went through and some of the bad relationships and God knows and career moves where I turned down things that I sh should have said yes to because um, I was looking for the perfect role, the perfect part, perfect story, but everything, you know, yes leads to more opportunities, no shuts the door, you know. So that's another lesson, I think, learning how to say yes. 
learning how to show up, say yes, be present, commit 100%, 200% to everything that you do opens the door to, uh, to your pot of fortune. Very good advice. You mentioned your rock musical. Can you tell me a little bit more about your music career? I know you studied classical piano as well. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> I plan the perfect picture. Um, I, uh, I always was taking, I, I used to write songs uh, on the guitar and I was on a soap opera and uh, they used to have a couple minutes while they rolled the, the credits at the end and they would tell me, you know, do you have anything you can sing? And so I would write 10 seconds of a song or 20 seconds of a song and then it grew into actually singing more in the soap opera and then I got into a rock musical uh, off Broadway called Love Me Love My Children which got an OB nomination for best musical. Uh, it ran for almost a year and, um, and then I did several other musicals. I recorded music, MGM Records wanted to sign me. Um, I had my music published but I never really followed through with it because part of it was, again, I didn't trust myself enough. You know, it's just one of those areas I just was a little unsure of and I kept kind of holding back, holding back, holding back. But I love to sing. Um, so I, uh, like I said, I, I love doing it all. I mean, I, when I work with people, the whole key is to find out what are you good at? and then develop all those talents and abilities. And these days, as you can see, performers, they can sing, they can dance, they can act, they can write, they can produce, they can direct. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing all of it. In fact, I just started singing again, mm -hmm. bringing out my guitar. I got an o -O, a Martin 0028, which is a pretty rare guitar. And like I said, I used to get, I used to sing again. Acting first and foremost was for me. Writing is first and for foremost for yourself. And singing was just a way to get out all the pain and heartache. And I'd sit there and I was thinking about this. How did nobody yell and scream, shut the frack up, you know, because... Maybe they were, but you couldn't hear. Well, that might be, because I used to sit in there, turn the lights off, and write these songs that just, I had so much heartache inside, you know, from, from childhood, and stepfathers, and all that kind of stuff. And so, and I'd just sing it out. I'd just get it out mm -hmm. through singing. So, uh... Again, it led into a, uh, it led into performing and, and helped me to open that door to, just I think using all my talents and abilities. <coughs> yeah. And can you tell us anything that you're working on now? Are you allowed to say? Uh, well, I'm doing a number of things. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I tell people, actors can't wait for auditions anymore. They can't wait for the phone to ring. Can't wait for your agent to basically create something for you. The industry has changed dramatically. By the way, the world is changing dramatically. I was saying a lot of this to the students, the architectural uh, architecture students in Mexico, that we have to learn, we all have to learn multiple languages. We have to think globally, no longer locally, globally. Uh, actors have to become entrepreneurial and, and develop a business sense. Um, the business side of your personality protects the artist side of you. Otherwise, you get taken advantage of. Um, you start co-creating or creating your opportunities. Um, Felicia Day came off of Buffy, couldn't get a job. And so what did she do? She wrote this little story thing called The, the Guild, which was this little story about gamers, right? And they couldn't sell it, so what did they do? They put it on the web. Nobody had done that before. It became a web series. First web series, first year, they spent their own money producing it. And second year, it got more popular, and they found a way for the fans to push a little button and fund it. And the third year, Microsoft and Sprint, and a number of big companies picked it up, and now there's like four million people watching it. And Blood and Chrome, the new Battlestar series um, that just debuted, is now a web series, which is, this is where a lot of networks and studios are, are going, because it's a way to reach the world. It's also a way for young actors, writers, producers to impact and leverage their self, themselves into the industry faster because you can do things for less money, you can put it out there, um, uh, you don't have to get a green light by some big executive up in the boardroom, you know, you can put it out there and if fans like it, everything is viral and the news will spread and people will come watch it and if enough people watch it, you now have tested the marketplace with a story, with a concept, with an idea, and you may be starring in it. You may be writing and producing and starring in it. It gets picked up by a network because they realize this thing has got some legs to it and there's an audience out there that's following it. So it's a new way for actors and actresses 
to create a pathway to success. It used to be you, you couldn't go anywhere without the agent. Without the audition being set up for you, you couldn't do it. These days, now you go out, you create jobs, you get together with people, network, write, produce, do a five minute short, create a movie. Um, you always know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody with equipment, with editing equipment, with a light package, with a camera package. I mean, there's a thing called the table where it's all filmmakers, writers, directors, producers, editors, everybody, and everybody networks. And you go online and if you have a request like, I need a location, I need a, an actress to play such and such a role, I'm looking for this, this, and this. And everybody responds depending on what they can do for that particular person and the request. So it's a great way to network and get something done with resources that you may not have but are available to you. So again, we all have to become empowered, entrepreneurial. We have to be proactive. You got to go out there and create your opportunities. And look, you can still do the other thing. Agents will still get you auditions from time to time. But you're going to create your own success. Seriously, that is the secret to life, isn't it? Yeah. Stop waiting for Godot. Is that the, is that the saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Can you tell us, the, are you working on a project right now that you're creating? Uh, working right bunch of things. Um, we have a thing called Who the Frack, but, uh, which is a reality show about the industry. Um, it is a gut level, in the street, real version of what it takes to make it in this business. And it's going to follow a bunch of actors, um, filmmakers, comedians, young people who come to town from different parts of the country. Uh, and I've been here the longest, so I'm kind of one of those guys that people come to for mentoring and, and coaching and you know what I mean, and stuff like that. Because I do go out and travel around the country coaching and doing workshops in addition to directing projects. I just directed a thing called White Wings, a period piece in Logan, Utah. Um, I'm developing this movie called Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying, which is a piece that uh, has a lot to say about uh, maybe this generation that we're going through right now. I think there's, um, there's a, there's a I think there's a lot of frustration, a lot of lost people out there. Uh, you know, and everybody's so busy trying to be what they think they should be, trying to fit in, trying to be cool, trying to be successful. It's probably one of the reasons we got into such economic problems, because people were buying things they couldn't afford for way too long. And again, it comes from an insecurity, right? So, you know, it's, we, we all kind of have to learn to get honest with ourselves and start to build our life from the ground up build a foundation that's strong based on really trusting who you are, finding out who you are, what you're good at, then taking the steps to build those talents and then learning how to enter into the marketplace and leverage those abilities into the marketplace. Like any business person, we're all in business for, you know what I mean? Yeah. So again, I'm fortunate. I get to act, write, direct, produce, teach, lecture, be crazy, have a lot of fun. Um, and I have lots of friends, yeah. And then I bring people that, one of my favorite things is bringing people together and uh, we, we host events. I do cruises where I teach my seminars and workshops on those cruises. Uh, I've done boot camps like Tony Robbins, four day boot camps to break through to success, uh, unleashing your power and creative vision, mastering fear. Um, and then I uh, have a social network called BattlestarGalactica.com which is on there and then I write novels and I'm developing this big epic sci-fi series called Magellan which will come out as a, um, a game and a series of graphic novels and a full novelization as well so I'm I'm doing a bunch of things yeah did I get it all in that was no, please I can see how inspirational you are I feel inspired <laughs> truly thank you thank so you. much for being here today one thing is missing is love <laughs> finding finding love I, I, I'm, I'm kidding actually <laughs> but but I'll tell you something boy finding, you know, building partnerships, business partnerships, but also relationships, because relationships can derail you. You know what I mean? They can derail you from everything that you want to do in life. That's why you have to really learn about relationships so you make smarter choices about who you choose to hang out with and involve yourself with, you know? That's one of the lessons I think I've learned the hard way as well, you know? So, how about you? Are you in love? Uh. <laughs> This isn't about me. <laughs> I'm in love with life. I'm in love with everyone. <laughs> I'm in love with life. I'll say that. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Kaylee Rose from Magic Image Hollywood Magazine. This is Richard Hatch. I dropped the magazine. And thank you so much for joining us. There we go. Now we got it. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> thank you. 
So I'm here with Solicito Vasquez, the, um, I love this, the Mexican music queen. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm sitting here with this incredible magazine, isn't she beautiful? Called M Magic Image Hollywood Magazine, the most popular magazine in Mexico. And uh, I've been talking to Solicito Vasquez, and uh, she's trying to talk me into singing with her. And I haven't sang for, my God, decades, but I'm willing to try it because uh, I love to sing. And I, honestly, I love Mexican music. I have a lot of uh, friends from Mexico. I was down there for f four days just a couple months ago. Love the people, love the city. And the only problem was I ate too much food and I couldn't drive anywhere because there was so much traffic. Other than that, it was absolutely amazing. But I'm looking forward to coming back down to Mexico. And uh, I can't wait to check out more of this magazine, especially this one that has one of my favorite lovely women on here, Olivia Newton-John, as you can see here. And of course, Magic Image Magazine is probably one of the most popular magazines in Mexico, so I'm very happy to, uh, to be here being interviewed by them. And I'm going to be in the magazine, so you're going to get to, to learn a little bit about me, and I look forward to learning a little bit more about you. So say we all. <laughs>